Okay, uh, councillors, it's my pleasure to welcome you along uh, to this extraordinary meeting of council. Um, we have uh, two items on the agenda, one uh, an open agenda and one uh, in committee. So just coming um, firstly to apologies, um, is there anyone uh, here that uh, we need to register or anybody that we need to register an apology for? I understand uh, Stuart is going to be a late tender. Um, is anybody else? Don't think, I think everybody else is here. Would somebody like to move that that uh, apology be sustained, please? Uh, John and seconded Neville, thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, the motion is carried. Thank you. Um, okay, so we'll move on then to uh, item two, which is the proposed COVID-19 <clears throat> short-term rates deferral policy. And all councillors will be uh, welcome along, Stuart. Uh, all councillors will be well aware that um, there are some within our community uh, that are really feeling the pinch in terms of uh, some financially, uh, given the, the challenges of this particular emergency. And I think it um, behoves us to look at ways that we can help um, in any way we can. And uh, the Chief Executive has done quite a bit of uh, work in the last few days just looking at how we might be able to um, make some refinements to our rates policy, uh, particularly referring to COVID-19 uh, and to, um, to give some assistance uh, to those who, uh, who may need that assistance over the next six month period. But Steve, can I just um, turn it over to you? Do you want to talk about um, what this policy is and then we'll open it for questions. Thanks, Your Worship. Yes, look, the policy is actually, first thing I need to emphasise, it is subordinate and but complementary to the Council's remission of rate policy, which is contained in our current long-term plan. To amend the uh, overarching remission of rates policy would require consultation with the public. And consultation is not something this Council shies away from, but of course, uh, we're in a situation of uh, economic and health a crisis and uh, the council is being asked to see if it can offer some type of relief uh, to ratepayers who are facing uh, rate instalments um, uh, notices very shortly. So hence the, the approach we've taken is to try and see if we can work within the existing policy framework to avoid having to consult so we can offer something up to ratepayers right here and now, almost in an instantaneous way. Um, so as my report says, it's not with the benefit of lots of reflection and time, uh, but it's trying to, as best as we are able, to offer uh, some simple forms of relief. Uh, so we have um, been able to, and the IT team have been really great to be able to offer up a, an online option with hopefully what is uh, deemed to be a user-friendly form. Um, uh, the policy is designed to be specifically referred to COVID-19 and offer us up to two uh, quarters or two rates instalments that can be deferred. Important to understand for anyone uh, perhaps li listening in at a future time is that this is not a rates remission, it's a deferral. And so the council does expect that it will receive rates, but in the fullness of time, and the council would work with the rate payers who uh, come through the application process and to work out a payment plan that is sustainable and acceptable to both parties. Um, the, the 31 August timeline for the proposed expiry of the uh, policy is so that um, there is only literally offered two, quarter, uh, two quarters worth of payments that can be deferred. Uh, and then with a few more months under our belt in, reg in regard to both um, what lies ahead of us, but what has come uh, behind us when we get towards that date, uh, the council will have a bit of time to actually be able to think about a more expansive um, policy package that it may want to um, entertain. And if so, it would need to factor in the um, requirement to consult with the public. So it's your worship, the staff's uh, best assessment of what we can do uh, to make uh, some of the instant pain go away for a while uh, and hopefully re release some burdens of everyday living from ratepayers, uh, but it does still require that those ratepayers commit to a payment plan and stick with it. Um, but uh, as I say, we've managed to be able to construct this so that 
It's not in violation of our main policy. Um, the policy does crucially provide for one uh, rates penalty per rate payer to be remitted per annum. And because this particular time we're straddling two financial years, we're able to offer up this policy package without um, breaching that overarching main policy. Um, so I think that's about it, Your Worship. We've tried to be as simple as possible. Hopefully we've got there, but I'm very happy to receive suggestions from elected members about the adequacy, the reach, um, and the messaging that comes with it. Uh, Mrs. Gherkin, the communications manager, will be able to provide a commentary about the, the type of communications plan that we've got ready to, uh, to deliver with this and support this proposal. And we have staff on standby to receive phone calls when it goes live on Friday, if, if approved. Well, thank you, um, Steve, uh, for the explanation. Uh, I, and I think it, it absolutely makes sense. And I just thank uh, you and staff who have worked on this over the last few days to, um, to bring it to um, the conclusion that you have. So we all councillors have a copy of the, of the proposal uh, before them. Uh, it comes with uh, two appendices. Uh, the first, um, appendices one and two, really refer to our current rate remission policy, and then we're looking at um, three and four um, for, the, for the deferral uh, policy. So um, without too much further ado, uh, I'll open that up for discussion and any questions or comments from councillors. So uh, Glennis, you had... Uh, you're on mute, Glennis. Sorry, sorry about that. I have two questions. Um, Will the rates deferred be in full because the remission policy says that it, it um, doesn't include the three waters and the waste? And the other question I have is, will there be capacity in the policy giving effect to those who are paying rates as part of their rental agreement? Because some of those businesses could have had losses. Um, I'm thinking of like the hospice that pays, pays rates, um, but they're the landlord, um, it's part of their agreement with the landlord. So I guess um, there's, there's a number of items and or points in that question, um, but just want to make it clear again, and Steve's already done that, that we're talking about a deferral policy here, not the remission policy. So we do need to be clear that there are two separate policies. Um, they'll stand alongside each other, uh, but not replacing each other. So Steve, do you want to answer those questions? You know, I think you, uh, yes, Your Worship, I think you've answered the first one that uh, it is remission. So, sorry, it's not remission, it's deferral. Therefore, you can defer um, your entire under policy rates instalment, both the fourth quarter for the current year and the first instalment for the next year um, completely and put it onto a time payment plan to satisfaction of the council's rating staff. Um, this policy is only open to the rate payer. Um, so, but that doesn't, so that for example, if uh, someone is a lessee, uh, and a commercial lessee, and under the commercial lease, that uh, lessee pays the rates, and that's quite often the case in commercial leasing, that um, tenant or lessee would be eligible for relief uh, under this policy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, Brett? Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a good policy. Um, I suppose the only point I'd like to make is we're in extraordinary times and, and many of the people impacted by this um, won't be used to asking for help. So I'm quite keen to see evidential aspects of the policy removed and just replaced with a declaration. So if someone's prepared to declare that they've got financial hardship and be prepared to declare that they've had a loss of employment, to me, that's enough. We're not giving the, the rates away, we're just deferring them. So I'd like to suggest anyway that if we could, you know, on page 12 and 13, if it refers to evidence, if that be, could become a declaration of financial hardship or a declaration of loss of employment, I think that's the time we're in, especially if we're in, a, in, a, uh, in an online uh, application. So Steve, is, is, that, is that still possible within the policy if that gains support or are there some legal aspects that would drive us to need evidence? Through your worship, no, uh, there's nothing, uh, legal in terms of impediment, uh, getting the road of implementing that. We gave that some, we being the staff, gave that some consideration. And 
I guess we were just want, not wanting to create a loophole where someone might say, well, I'll just have a, a six month holiday. It sounds like a good idea when they perhaps don't need it. Uh, so on balance, we thought um, some evidence of hardship without being onerous uh, would have, um, would, would be the way to go, but guided by the council. There's no, there's no uh, legal impediment to uh, changing it as you um, suggested to Councillor Highstead. You know, thank you. I take your point, I, I guess, yeah. It, it would be a, in this interest rate environment, there'd be hardly much advantage to, to try and screw the scrum on rates. Um, but that's my view. Be interested in other councils' view. Yeah, no, I, I think you raise a good point, Brett. And, um, and I think the response has been, been a good one from, uh, from Chief Executive as well. Um, but I see Bronwyn, did you want to ask something on this as well? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I agree with Brett on this one. I think, um, you know, maybe people, it would be a big issue for some people to even put their hand up to say that they're struggling financially. And, um, you know, really, the government didn't ask for a lot of information or requirements around um, the payments that they made. And I think it would be really good if we could explore that and maybe come up with that. And the other point I'd like to make too is I it's nice to see that the penalties would be dropped. Um, I think that's a really good move as well. So I think that should be also uh, front and foremost when it's being laid out to the public that no penalties apply. Thank you. Um, okay, so before we go on, any further discussion around evidence as opposed to declaration? Right. Uh, Points have been well made. Yes, Your Worship. Um, look, while it, it's desirable, um, not to require evidence. I, I, I think the key word the chief executive uses is, is uh, some evidence about the impact of COVID without being onerous. And I think we have to rely on the staff. One has to remember that those people who are not going to take uh, advantage of uh, the feral policy will in fact be carrying um, other members for a short time. And that's fine. So I think we've got to be just use a little bit of discretion. But once again, the key words are uh, evidence without being onerous. And uh, it's an opportunity for council to demonstrate the, the human face of what we do. Yeah. Thank you, um, Councillor Bolger. Um, Councillor Grant, Doug. Thanks, Your Worship. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Brett and also Bronwyn. Um, I think... Um, the, yeah, if you're going to put your hand up, you know, you, you're actually in trouble. I don't believe that this is going to be abused. Uh, there will be, there are people out there that are hurting right now. People have lost their jobs, but also as we get going forward a little bit further, uh, there will be uh, businesses that are struggling. There will be uh, employers that have to lay people off and all sorts of things. And, and just another um, having to show it. I don't believe we need to have a, um, a huge fill, uh, form filling exercise or anything like that, or, or even having to have the interviews. If you just uh, sign the agreement and say, listen, I really would need to defer my rates for the next um, one quarter or two quarters, whatever, which way you want to do it, I think that should be enough. That's just my opinion. Okay, any further questions, comments, Richard? Um, yeah, Richard, well. Yeah, uh, just just in regard to the policy, uh, I believe it's, a, it's well laid out. Good policy with reference to um, the fact relating to whether we need a uh, stat deck or that um, that evidence of hardship. Obviously, there's a welfare component, but it would still be uh, the understanding of the ratepayers that are looking at people uh, making application or um, under the criteria that there will be a gatekeeping facility there that every person who applies is not going to automatically be uh, a getter. Is that, uh, that will be um, obviously looking at um, these applications. Mm. Um, Councillor Davis, thank you. Yes, thank you, Worship. Uh, I agree with Brett's stance. I think that um, if people are, are going to apply, they're going to already be 
uh, at a disadvantage and I don't believe we should make them go through too many hoops um, to you know to progress this so I, I would I'd be in favor of not too many uh, requirements around uh, proof of or um, such like so that, that would be my stance mm, thank you um, Councillor Dixon Dennis uh, through you, Worship, I just think because it's a deferral and not a remission of rates that we don't need to be too onerous about it. But one question I would raise is that does council need to be accountable for um, the rates deferral? So I'm just not quite sure what you mean by that. Um, well, do we need to have a criteria to meet like um, people's finances just so that we are accountable to the to the rate payers, that we are deferring rates for the right reasons. Um, look, I, I think that's pretty laid out, pretty well laid out in the, the paper you've got before you. I'm just not sure what what more we could ask for there if we want to be a little bit flexible um, and um, agile in, in the way we go about this, but open for suggestions. I'm just not quite sure where to. Uh, from here with that, that suggestion. Um, okay, uh, Councillor um, uh, uh, Neville, do you want to? Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just um, reiterate what, what the other councillors have said uh, in regard to the policy, and I think it's a good policy. Just that I think uh, while it's been recorded that perhaps Steve could um, pass on um, his assurance that uh, the council itself is in a financial position to be able to do this at the moment. And uh, will be no um, burden on the, on rate powers uh, further down the track. You want to make some comment there, Chief Executive? Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. Look, this is a step into the unknown. The, I say the unknown only in, in terms of the type of um, uplift on this policy that we may uh, receive. Um, but we, that's why I've uh, hit my bet slightly in the report saying that it may be necessary to um, uh, borrow short term to cover uh, the um, amount that uh, we may not take in the rates in those two quarters. That said, having talked, spoken with the management account today, um, she, was pretty, she was pretty comfortable because we've drawn down some funds for um, forthcoming capital works that we should be able to um, manage this without the need for doing further short-term borrowing. Um, and hence, it's obviously, uh, it requires a lot of deft and skilled management by staff to uh, monitor payment, repayment plans and make sure that uh, they are adhered to. Uh, and ultimately that um, the funds that we need to deliver the services do eventually win their way back into the council system. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, that definitely answers the question and gives also um, an understanding to the other ratepayers that may be watching this. That uh, yeah, we're doing everything we can possibly can to um, um, for a for a complete. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any further question or comment? Um, I've got some hands up there, Richard. Is that one you had up from before? Uh, and Neville. Um, mine's from before, thanks, Your Worship. Okay. And so John, um, Councillor Gardner and John? Yes, it's good, good policy, and I think the secret will be um, flexibility and discretion by the staff in administering this one and uh, being able to spread those payments over a longer term, depending on the situation. And I think that'll be easily summed up in a town like Gore. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Councillor Reid, Roman? Uh, you're on mute, Roman. I beg your pardon. Um, thanks, Your Worship. Um, the other thing that I would, maybe the, um, the people who are talking to the uh, ratepayers who apply for this, maybe they would, should also mention the rates rebate because, because of income loss or something, they may find that they're eligible for that as well. And that may um, defer a, a, pa a payment for them. It may not be all of it, but it, it, because it's a sliding scale, they should be eligible for some. Okay. Well, um, 
Any further comment or question? I, I get the sense that there's a, a mood to change the wording from evidence to declaration. Um, is, does that require uh, an amendment? Do you want me to go through an amendment or is there a general agreement with that? Anybody violently opposed to that? Um, Stuart, you want to make a comment? Uh, you worship, um, uh, Stuart. Yeah. Stuart. Oh, sorry, no, no. I'm happy with happy with that, uh, Tracy. I was just acknowledging I was happy with it by putting my pen oh, up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So, Councillor Bolger. Um, while I'm opposed to that um, change in, in wording, I'm certainly um, fully supportive of, of the policy, and you know, I'm not going to go on a ditch over it. Thank you, Councillor Bolger. So um, if there's no further questions or comments, um, Councillor Reid, you still got your hand up. Was there something else or was it just, okay, and Cliff, thank you. Um, if there is no further comments and with that one change around the wording um, uh, re evidence being replaced by declaration, uh, would somebody like to move the, the policy that you have before you? Uh, Councillor Davis, job seconder, um, Stuart, thank you. Um, right, is there any discussion before I put that motion? There's not, I put the motion, all those in favour, please say aye, oh, raise your hand. Thank you. Against, uh, unanimous, uh, the motion is carried. Um, thank you, councillors. Um, and I, look, I, I think that we've made a, a really good uh, step here and that uh, there will be some people that uh, find some real benefit from this. And, and it's just good to see that the council is prepared to respond um, quickly uh, and with empathy to uh, the way that people will be feeling uh, as we go into the, the next phase of this particular um, challenge ahead of us. Okay, so we move on now to uh, item three, which is a, a piece of business that needs to be uh, discussed in committee, um, it is a, a piece of business looking at um, rubbish recycling, waste management, uh, and just some rethinking around that. Um, the reason for going into uh, into committee is for um, maintaining legal privilege and to enable uh, the local authority holding the information to carry on without prejudice, disadvantage negotiations, um, including commercial and industrial negotiations. So I'm going to move that council now moves into committee. Do I have a seconder for that? I'll Councilor second, Bolger. Your Worship. Councillor Bolger, thank you. Um, is there any discussion 